what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my guide to charles martel in rise of kingdoms now i was actually surprised at how many people asked me for this commander guide especially after my richard video a lot of you guys were asking me to talk about charles martel because you're planning on using him with richard and you want to know more about him and i think that's a great idea i think that's an excellent pair they're a really great pairing because they're super tanky and they give you a ton of infantry stats and they're just they're great commanders right and so i figured it's about time we talk about the immortal hammer himself and why i think he might actually be the best gold key commander i mean let's talk briefly about that right he's an infantry garrison defense commander which is what we uh discussed briefly in my richard video and he's still used by top tier players in season three season four of kvk and potentially even beyond i mean him garrisoning a flag or fortress um, with Constantine is known to be a decent answer to Attila Takeda. Now, of course, it depends on your a lot of different factors, of course, um, but I do think that, you know, him being part of that meta uh, it makes him super valuable for a very long time. And we can't really say that about a lot of the other gold key commanders. You know, sometimes you see Cao Cao secondary to somebody like saladin or khan or something like that uh you'll see maybe once in a while a uh, mehmed rally for hitting a city uh same thing with caesar you know caesar rallies are mainly in the early game season one and two of kvk you know el cid is interesting in season one kvk and then people have been testing him at, for for defense with this fourth skill but you know i don't really know if it's been that effective you know so and then frederick you see him sometimes if he's expertise right but but when we talk about what's actually meta um i think charles martel is probably the most meta for the most amount of time out of all of the other gold key commanders right and that's not to say the other ones are bad right i obviously expertise Cao Cao. i think he was great and i he was my first expertise a long time ago long story regardless charles martel is an excellent uh commander to get from the gold keys i think he's the best for the reasons i just described with that being said let's talk about the skills of charles martel and we'll start to discuss why he's so good now the first skill on charles martel is called shield of francia this is what made him super super good right out out of the out of the gate right because no other commanders had shields this powerful um now of course we have alexander and there are leonidas other commanders with shields however this skill is what set him apart and it still makes him incredibly good today so let's read it it says rage requirement of a thousand this is his active skill it's charles martel activates a shield that can absorb massive damage with a damage factor of 1200 for the next four seconds also increases troops damage by 30 percent while the shield is active so this is really good right he is absorbing damage that is being dealt to him so this is a way that makes him tanky in a way that um richard doesn't actually have so richard reduces damage taken by a percentage and also heals slightly wounded troops to bring them back to the battlefield charles martel literally is just absorbing damage with his shield and that's what's giving him a lot of his bulk and the more rage regeneration you get the more often he's going to pop this shield off and that just makes him very very powerful also um he's dealing 30 percent more damage for those four seconds so if you're able to pair him somebody with uh with somebody who uh has a lot of rage regeneration you're gonna have that uh, damage bonus up for a significant amount of time because it is for four seconds right it's for four seconds with that being said let's take a look at martel's second skill it's called heavy infantry and this increases infantry units defense by 15 percent and their health by 15 percent so if you look at richard and i'm going to be comparing them a bit in this video um this is attack and defense so this actually makes martel a little bit more tanky in the statistics department for infantry units because you have that health stat now health is actually of the three you, right you have health attack and defense um health is the hardest stat to artificially raise by that i mean a lot of commanders do give you attack or defense or march speed not that many of them give health from what i've seen and also you know you have the attack uh, items that you can use in here in your items uh, item bag or whatever we'll go down to boost so you have the 12 hour enhanced attack and you have the 12 hour enhanced defense which you know you pop 
pop this item and you instantly get 5% for 12 hours or the 24 hour ones give you 10% extra stats, which is crazy. There's none for health, right? This, this, there's none, there's not an item like this for health. So, you know, if you're lacking in the health department, there's nothing, there's no instant boost that you can use to boost that stat. So having health on Martel is really good because, you know, yes, it's nice that Richard brings attack to the, to the field, but you can use an attack item uh, for Martel and at least get that 5%. Whereas for Richard, you can't do a 5% health item right now again if you're using them in conjunction with one another they all kind of add together to make an insanely good army regardless let's move on to the third skill this skill is called the uncrowned king and it says increases watchtower defense by 10 percent and garrison attack by 10 percent when this commander is serving as garrison commander now we've talked about this before but the watchtower defense is not that significant the best part about this third skill is the garrison attack by 10 percent you know we've we've mentioned this in multiple videos the watchtower typically dies pretty quickly in a battle um a couple of turns at most so buffing the watchtower is not that exciting to me um i i i wonder if watchtower needs a buff in general i don't know um it, it is hard enough to hit cities as it is so maybe not but regardless um the best thing here is that you're getting an attack bonus of 10 percent for your garrison now this is important to know because this is your garrison in general this is not say 10 percent uh attack to infantry right this is for any troop type in your garrison which is good that means if he's on your wall then your entire garrison is is getting this buff not just infantry which you know that does differ from his second skill let's take a look at his third skill this says martel's counterattack, and wouldn't you know it just increases troops counterattack by 30 percent now this is an insanely good skill because if you are getting rallied by multiple targets or even if your city is getting swarmed or your flag is getting swarmed or whatever you're going to be dealing a lot of counterattack damage to all of those different armies and that is insanely good like 30% just flat across the board. This is not for four seconds or for two seconds. This is just always, you're always dealing 30% more counterattack damage. And that makes him insanely good for defending objectives, right? Defending flags, defending forts, um, in Ark of Osiris. He's really good for defending there as well. And of course in your city. With that being said, let's move on to his expertise, which obviously I do not have. I wish I did, but I don't. It says rise from the ashes. And what this says is it basically changes his uh, second skill. So that way, instead of it being 15 defense, 15 health, it is 20% defense, 20% health and 20% March speed. So when Martel is expertise, he's actually bringing more infantry stats than Richard to the battlefield, right? He's bringing 40% of battle stats plus 20% of March speed. Whereas Richard is bringing total, I think 30% and then maybe his expertise is a little bit. No, it doesn't. Um, it, so really like Martel is bringing more infantry buffing stats if he's expertise than Richard and he'll be faster on the battlefield, which I think is insane, right? That's really crazy. Now keep in mind, it does take 690 gold sculptures to expertise a legendary commander, which is crazy like that is insane that's way 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 too many but that is the number right that's how many it takes so keep that in mind so if you're trying to expertise him as a free-to-play player and the only way that you're getting him is from gold keys it's going to take forever it's gonna take forever i think i've used some universals on my martel and i've been playing the game for a year and a half and i've opened an insane amount of gold keys and i'm still hundreds of sculptures away right so keep that in mind expertising him strictly from gold keys is going to take a ridiculous amount of time um with that being said i think martel is good as a 5511 i think if you're going to level this commander up i would say keep him below level 10 right and get this first skill to five and what does that mean that means that whenever you add a skill point to him it's guaranteed to go to this skill because he's less than he's only one star right he's an only, only at one star which means all of your skill points are guaranteed to go to this which is good i would then bring him to two stars and you know keep him there until you get this skill to five and the reason for that is because it gives you 30 percent infantry stats which is good now you look at somebody like olji mundok uh, they give you 30 percent of stats as well which you know hey that's that's nice that that is his expertise but 
you know it is nice um this is for him it's his second skill you might as well get it there and then at that point he's pretty good in the open field right you can pair him with somebody like olji and you'll have a lot of infantry stats on your army which is great for a full infantry build and then you'll have these two at one and ideally you know when you um skill him up I don't know if you're going to mainly use them for open fields you would want this fourth skill if you're going to mainly use them on on your wall then both of these are good but i guess probably the third skill is a little bit better it depends on if you're getting swarmed or not but regardless i would say five five one one is what i would shoot for for charles martel because otherwise if he's five one 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 then he only gets 10 percent of infantry stats which is just not that great um it's just it's not even as good as an expertise epic like we just saw right like with ulji so yeah i would definitely bring him to five five one one and then i think he's good right i think he's a good commander at five five one one now of course the more skill ups he has the better but he's somebody that if you're a free to play player um you can use him at five five one one in the open field i think that's a totally reasonable thing to do and you may even want him on your wall now one of the main things that people requested of me about charles martel is my talent build on him and i'll show that to you now this is my talent build and as you can see immediately i went all the way to the end of the defense tree just like i did with um richard the first i also have this first line here of the garrison tree um i did make a video talking about garrison uh you're the best like the best garrison commanders for free to play players um i do think that this is a good build now i also made my way up here to call the pack now this is an interesting talent i think that this talent is very good because when you go below 50 percent strength you get six percent defense to all troop types it doesn't say infantry so any troop types that are with martel they will get that six percent you know typically you're going to use him in a full infantry build anyway so it doesn't really matter what i would be interested in knowing is does this apply if he's in your garrison i don't actually know i haven't tested this i'm not really sure how i would test this um i guess i would have to have my city get rallied and then check the battle log to see if call of the pack activates and i'm just not <laughs> willing to get rallied for that for that purpose um if anybody knows definitively the answer to that make sure you comment it down below to help not only me but everybody else watching this video um you just would be helping all of us out by letting us know but yeah um if this does work in your garrison then that is really good like that's really really good because your garrison is going to be filled with four different troop types and having all of their defense increased by six percent is insanely good if it doesn't apply that's okay uh, because there may be instances in the future where you would have a uh, non-infantry with your martel it's unlikely but if it does happen you have call the pack and even if not it's a six percent defense boost to your infantry which is nice i also grabbed undying fury just for the rage and i grabbed iron spear at two just to deal some extra damage to the cavalry units now looking at this i may you know maybe i should have had two points in undying fury and one uh, and an extra point in iron spear but you know this is more of a universal thing whereas this is specifically and an only effective when attacking cavalry so you know it is what it is um now one other thing worth noting is if you're going to be building martel for defending against swarms or defending flags and forts uh i think that this build should be tweaked right this is not the best build for that this is what i have him in uh, my city on my wall right one thing that you should know is that um, if you think that you are going to get swarmed it may be worth going to get know thy enemy in fact it probably is worth getting know thy enemy because it says if you're surrounded you have damage reduction effects are enhanced by nine percent while this is the garrison commander so nine percent damage reduction is insanely good um again this only applies if you're getting surrounded though so if you just get hit by a single rally this isn't going to do anything for you which is why i don't have it now of course if you are a mega well and the only way to take you down is by multi rallying your city you better have no thy enemy <laughs> you you just better have it right there's no reason not to but if you're a 20 million power player typically you're gonna get taken out by a single rally and you know it's possible for it's possible for you to get multi-rally it's possible 
but are we really going to see alliances investing that much time and effort to zero a 20 million power player i usually don't see that right usually if i see a 20 million or even a 30 million power player get rallied i just see them get rallied twice by the same guy and then they're done right that's it they don't have enough troops to sustain that level of um of damage output from the enemy so this is a tricky one to decide if you should get in my opinion um if you're a mega whale if you've got you know 50 60 million power or more then you might need this which means maybe i should have it um i just haven't gotten around to to editing this but in the early game i just don't know if if this is really necessary that's just my opinion i usually see lower power players get taken out by a single rally or maybe they get rallied twice back to back and then that's it right their troops are dead they're never really swarmed um if you you know think you're gonna get swarmed obviously you know your kingdom better than me you you should put the, the points in here now again if you're going to be using him in flags or forts or things like that king's guard is very good this will give you three percent attack three percent defense and three percent health when this is the garrison commander now a fun fact about king's guard there is actually in the patch notes now i'm just going to show this to you here that way you guys can follow along with what i'm saying these are the patch notes of update 1.0.21 that came out july 5th 2019 so this is almost a year ago that this update came out and if you scroll all the way to the bottom here this says adjustment to garrison talents impregnable empty fortress blah blah blah, blah. king's guard right king's guard are now effective for all garrison situations so they basically said that all of these talents are now effective for all garrison situations well garrisoning your city is a garrison situation so these patch notes these this is an official patch note right that is basically saying that king's guard now should work in your city well it doesn't right it doesn't uh, this is the original text that says it doesn't work in your city. Then they patched it and said that it does work in your city, but they never changed the text. And so then people thought, well, the text is just wrong. Um, and then people actually tested it and found out that it doesn't actually work while in your city. So King's guard, you know, if this worked in your city would be insanely good, right? It would be insanely good, but even though it's supposed to, I guess, right? It's supposed to according to the patch notes, but it doesn't so the only reason that you should grab king's guard is if you think that you're going to be defending flags forts or you know objectives in ark of osiris things like that then king's guard is insanely good um i don't know if it's bugged in any of those other scenarios i hope not <laughs> um but you know in the event that you are defending a flag or something like that king's guard is very good right because it doesn't matter what troop type is in the is in the flag it's going to get those nine percent of stats it, which is just incredibly good now the bad part about going all the way up to these two talents and putting all the talent points in there is that you know of course that means you're gonna have to sacrifice talents from other places which you know if you're going to be def if all you're going to be doing with him is defending an objective i would probably maybe take away the infantry stuff in case there's not infantry that ends up in the flat i don't know um really this this doesn't really matter too much for defending a um these two i mean it's not super important compared to stuff like this these are way more important than that right but you're gonna have to take more than that away just to get to these these two um talents and you're gonna have to grab adamantine walls and city guardian both of which i think are very bad talents um so you know it is what it is um however it is worth noting that these little half percentage points are pretty useful for your city defense so not all is lost there but regardless this is the build that i am comfortable with using i think this will apply in the most amount of scenarios even though that maybe that's not the, the case i don't know um but i just wanted to fill you guys in a little bit with um with the other options that you do have now it's also worth noting that when you're considering how should i build my martel if you're thinking well i probably should have him for defending flags just in case well i would caution you against that if you are a free-to-play player i would recommend not considering 
flags or forts or arc of osiris in your talent build um when you are defending those types of structures you really want to have the most powerful player possible doing so with expertise legendary commanders it's just going to make a world of difference for the outcome of that rally and taking that rally of that on that flag and so i don't want to see free-to-play players build their martel for just in case i have to defend a flag because again it's it's unlikely that as a free-to-play you would be most qualified to do that flag defense it you know in some, there's probably some exceptions there are probably some of you free-to-play players out there who are absolute savages and have done everything correct and you're in a weaker alliance and maybe you are one of the more qualified people if certain players are offline and if that's the case that's great but i think for most players that are free to play i would not consider building your martel for defending flags forts arc of osiris objectives things like that that's why for me i have him built in a way that uh, he can do a decent job defending my city but i also can you know if i if i have to i can throw him in the open field without a talent reset i probably shouldn't do that because he's that's not optimal but regardless um this is the build that i use <laughs> if you guys were curious this is what i use i think it's decent um it if there there's there are exceptions of course there are other ways that you can build him that are better for flags and all the other things that i just talked about but this is in general a, a build that i like it just isn't the best for all scenarios so with that being said you should be using your charles martel on the wall if he's 5511 in my opinion i think that's a really great option for free to play players now it may take you a little bit to get him to 5511 if the only way you're that you're getting him is from uh your gold keys but eventually you'll probably want to want him on your wall and that's who i have on my wall i think he's pretty good on the wall and so i have him and charles uh, i'm sorry him and sun tzu on my wall just in case i get rallied now it's worth noting that the best defense for an incoming rally is being a member of your alliance or kingdom discord um if you have an, if you're in an alliance that doesn't have a discord then you probably are lacking in the communication department at least in my opinion i know there are other apps that people use you don't necessarily need to use discord but that's what uh, my alliance uses not 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 that i'm the leader of the alliance but the alliance that i'm in uses discord and it's been insanely useful for preventing some players from getting zeroed right it's just you need a way to contact them outside the game because real life gets in the way of being online all the time but a discord can save you save your city and you know people can call you they can tag you they can spam you with notifications it's very good to be a part of a alliance discord or a kingdom discord or something like that along those lines so that way you can avoid to even taking a city hit if you're not prepared for it um, but if you know you should just in case you should have something on your wall that is good with handling those types of things and i think charles martel is very good at that on the topic of discord join my discord link is in the description below shameless plug um i won't be able to tell you when you're getting rallied or anything like that but it will tell you the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video or if i go live on twitch and there's also a community of other people there who play the game and you can ask questions and find a jumper group and things like that so go ahead and do that down below so we've talked about his skills we've talked about his talents and we've talked about what charles martel is good for he's good at defending objectives in cities with that being said he's also good in the open field i think i think he's a decent tanky commander in the open fields now of course there is alexander the great and there's other you know guan yu there's plenty of infantry commanders that you can use in the open field that are very powerful but for a free to play player and for players in earlier kingdoms you know or i should say newer kingdoms um charles martel is still a great option and you do still see lots of charles martel in the open field whether he's primary or secondary to somebody like richard and similar to richard as a tanky commander there are plenty of other commanders that you can use as a secondary to charles martel now obviously the pairing that i want to talk about really quick is richard the first now if you're going to get both richard the first and charles martel as 5511 then i would recommend building your richard like this as and i talked about this in my 
previous video this is probably how i would build richard now you know you could make arguments that this point here should go into undying fury or maybe you should take one point out of this and put it on regardless this is in general uh the best way that i think that you can build richard in my opinion if what you want is tankiness um and if you do again if you're planning on getting both richard and martel i would build richard in this way and in that combo i would do richard primary um charles martel secondary in the open field then by doing that you've actually freed up your martel for a more garrison heavy build and that will leave him fully functional as a primary in your garrison right so building martel for garrison building richard for open field fighting i think is the best of both worlds because then you just swap them whenever you need one over the other so again put him on the wall richard as the primary in the open field so a richard martel combination is incredibly good we've already talked about how they're both insanely tanky in their own right so combining the two is just nuts right like it just it just doesn't die right it just doesn't die now of course that is a bit of an exaggeration but you will have to swarm this army to get it to go down it just doesn't really want to quit it's so funny seeing people swarm especially if they're both expertise it, they just last forever and it's it's really crazy now another great pair that you can have for the open field is a charles martel and sun tzu combination which you also can use in your garrison which is what i just showed you guys on my wall now what this combination does is it will give you the tankiness of charles martel plus his 30 percent infantry stats and it will give you the rage regeneration of sun tzu and his 10 percent infantry health plus he gets 10 percent damage taken reduction which is good he also deals skill damage which is crazy so this combination kind of is a honestly it's, it's a good combination for open field fights where there are tons of enemies out on the field and you just want to hit all of them while also adding to your survivability right that's what martel primary does a lot of times if you see sun tzu in the open field he's going to get targeted he's going to get swarmed down because people don't like sun tzu they see him and they know that he's getting incredibly good value by smacking targets in an aoe fashion if they see a martel in the open field usually he gets ignored for a while usually martels are the ones that get targeted later in the fight unless people really are paying attention they say oh he's got an e-song with him or he's got a sun tzu with him then people maybe try to target him a little bit just so that way they can get that aoe out of the field but you know when you have a martel primary sun tzu secondary your sun tzu will typically be pretty safe for a while uh, and i think that's a really great combination now as i just said isong ye is another really great pairing now of course we've mentioned this before and i talked about isong in my commander guide for him if you guys missed that make sure to check it out on my channel but uh, i did talk about isong technically being an archer commander but not really needing to be in an archer army um and a martel primary isong a secondary is a good tanky army obviously you would want to do full infantry for that army to give the most amount of tank and then what isong is doing as secondary is just spraying the battlefield with aoe and occasionally generating a nice amount of rage and really just dealing a ton of damage in the open field which is a great choice now just like sun tzu you can do a martel primary isong secondary as a garrison and this is also an option for a flag or a fort or even arc of osiris objectives by having isong as a secondary to martel you're not only getting the tankiness of martel but the isong will be able to demolish the open fields and the enemies that are in that open field as well as people that are attempting to reinforce the rally um, and so this is a very good combination not only for open field fighting but for also defending objectives now usually you know joan of arc you could usually usually you see joan of arc on a richard and the reason for that is because richard is just healing over and over and over again and keeping joan of arc alive but with the generic tankiness of martel i think that you could make the argument that joan of arc would be a decent secondary to your uh, martel if what you want to do is buff 
everybody else around you that's what Joan of Arc is doing and you know Martell would be an excellent escort he's basically the bodyguard of Joan of Arc he's going onto the battlefield he's absorbing damage people are kind of ignoring him because he's so tanky and Joan of Arc is able to thus give you a very nice buff to your your own armies and all of your allied armies nearby and she's generating 200 rage every single time that her active skill goes off and that rage regeneration is not something that martel has all on his own which means that that rage regeneration is actually going to make his shield pop a ton more and that damage bonus will also pop a ton more so you know again you usually see her with richard but i think you could totally make the case that her with martel would be a fine pair Another free to play option would be Ulji Mundok. Now, the whether you want Ulji primary or Martel primary is really up to what you're trying to do. I think Ulji will probably deal more damage as primary because he has the attack tree, whereas, you know, Martel has the defense tree. That being said, with the defense tree, Martel is going to be more tanky. And you know as a free-to-play player you may prefer to have the tankiness and the only reason that i say that is because when you see an old Mundok on the field typically he gets attacked right typically people don't take him that seriously regardless of what he's bringing around and they they just try to kill him and i don't know if that's a good idea because you know his fourth skill does enable him to deal a lot of damage if he does get surrounded but with that being said um, I do think that if what you want to do is last the longest in the battlefield, then Martel primary with Ulji Mundok secondary is a decent pairing. You do get that defense debuff, very small, unsatisfying data, uh, damage factor in my opinion, uh, but you do get the defense reduction, which is nice. And he does give you 30% of infantry stats, which is more than Sun Tzu gives you, who's also an in infantry epic. So there's a lot to be said about an Ulji Mundok pairing with Martel. I think that's a totally something that you could do. Uh, again, the Martel primary will be more defensive. Ulji will be a little bit dealing a little bit more damage. Now you could also pair him with Scipio for a more generic tank build. Uh, the problem with this is I don't know if Scipio would be a better option than either Sun Tzu or Ulji Mundok, who are both also epic commanders. So if you're going to be pairing him with an epic, it's probably not going to be Scipio, but he is an option if he is one of the only expertise epics that you have. If you're in the early game, um, you know, he is just very tanky. And so that's something that you could choose to do. Um, having a Scipio with your uh, Martel would be a, a reasonable pairing. I, I don't see why that wouldn't be reasonable. Now, Julius Caesar is kind of the legendary version of Scipio. And because of that, he's also a pair that you could choose again as with the richard video i just don't know if like there's not that many players that are in the scenario where they have a decent caesar and a decent martel who doesn't also have a decent richard or Esong or something like that um because you know richard uh, julius caesar you know you get him in the gold keys i don't know it's just him and freddie are kind of in the same boat where the players who would benefit from this pairing probably have better options anyway but technically they wouldn't be terrible with Charles Martel now you can also pair him with Alexander the Great now I don't actually know if their shields stack forgive me I know I'm supposed to be the excerpt but I don't actually know if their shields stack I I feel like I've heard that they don't but I I don't know so do not quote me on that um that may be wrong um, even if they don't stack, right? Even if they don't, there's still three other skills on Alexander that are incredibly good for infantry commanders. And you could have an Alexander primary with a Martel secondary. I think that will deal crazy damage in the open field. It'll have a ton of infantry stats and it'll have crazy March speed. You're going to get 30% March speed from Alexander. And if you're richer, I'm sorry, if your Martel is expertise, you're also going to get the March speed from Martel's expertise, which means you're going to have a really fast combo, which is going to be really unique and very interesting in the open field. Now you can also pair him with Guan Yu. Guan Yu does have the expertise that says whenever he gets a shield, he also increases his active skill damage by 15% for three seconds. So an expertise Guan Yu is something that you could pair with Martel. However, if you have an expertise Guan Yu, you probably also have an expertise to Alexander, um, or at least a good Alexander. And in that event, you probably are going to want to use Alexander instead. But regardless, technically, you could use Guan Yu with him as well. And Constantine, we've already talked about Constantine in this video, but a Constantine with Martel is an exceptionally good uh, pairing to defending structures. So 
definitely a pairing that you can use incredibly incredibly versatile one of the things you'll notice is that the more powerful the commander the more pairings you could potentially do with them and so you know i could talk forever about different pairings and combos and things like that with martel but i think i've covered the main ones in this video um, and so you should have plenty of of ideas on how he can be used and how useful he can actually be now this is the equipment that i have on my martel right now i've mentioned this in previous videos that i've only recently started taking equipment somewhat seriously and i'm very behind with that being said you want to build your martel in a way that will be best used for your garrison so in that event the boots are slightly useful right they are slightly useful because there are archers in my city and if my city got attacked then this will work which is good same thing with the gloves this actually does help infantry which is what martel does best same thing with the helmets um, we do have the infantry breastplate here which not only just helps your infantry for the open field but it also helps your cavalry as well so in your city if you do get hit um, that's a good option now staff of the lost same thing um this is on him because he is on my wall now even in the open field it does give you five percent infantry defense which i think is good but if it's if he's in your uh, garrison and your city gets attacked well you also get the five percent archer defense and the three percent cavalry defense so that's a great option and then of course greaves of the exile gives both infantry and archers a defense of plus three percent so really what i would what i would do and what i would change with this is i would probably change his helmet to something like the abyssal visage on my minamoto or something like that um just because i think that's probably a better helmet for defending your city same thing with the gloves i would probably change them for uh, actually probably not it's that severance um but something else other than just this because right this is only only helping your infantry same thing with the boots only helping your archers you would want to change those to something that helps a wider variety of in, of uh, troop types that way again if your city gets hit all of your troop types are getting buffed by the equipment on your garrison commander which would be martel and i think that's the best way to build him if you're building him strictly for open field fighting well then you would just want to focus on equipment that buffs your uh, infantry stats by the most amount and in that case then the iron helm and the gloves are actually not that bad of a choice um because they you know if you can get them to pop the um the special talent then that will actually increase it by a nice little chunk as well so um that's kind of the short take that i have on equipment again this is always the part of the video where i'm the least knowledgeable um because i've just only recently started focusing on equipment and there's not really that much equipment in the game and a lot of the best stuff is really for heavy spenders so it's it's hard to recommend equipment um especially when a majority of the audience isn't going to be getting the best of the best because even i can't get the best of the best it's just so expensive with that being said guys if you've made it this far into the video hopefully you i've earned a thumbs up i would really appreciate you guys dropping a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel at the time of recording this we're about 200 subscribers away from 10,000, which is a crazy crazy milestone i'm super happy and excited and grateful to be uh at that point in 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 my youtube journey which is it's just nuts so thank you guys so much for all of the support lately it does really mean a ton i would also love it if you guys could check out my twitch link is in the description below drop a follow down there and you'll be notified whenever i go live for rise of kingdoms i've already talked about my discord but that's also in the description below if you want to come and check that out the rest of my social media links are in the description and if you want to play rise of kingdoms on your pc there will be a link down there to download it for free as always if you have any questions about charles martel or parent or builds or anything like that comment down below any questions that you have and I will try to answer as many of you as I can and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omni Arc I will talk to you guys again soon peace